Hey guys, what's up? It's Fern. Thank you so much for joining me for another plenty video. So, you know, every spring I like to film a spring propagations video, taking my spring propagations, getting excited for the upcoming season. Yeah, I love doing that. So, I did that. I filmed that video a few days ago and then I sat down to edit it and... <laughs> the audio was not usable. Once again, this happened to me for my last video as well. Yeah, I've been having some technical difficulties lately. So I am going to be showing you all of the propagations that I took. We are going to be going through them together. I'm going to kind of tell you my plan for the plants that I am propagating and trying to fill out. I find this time of year to be the best time to take cuttings because we're close enough to spring that they're gonna do fine, but we're like at the very tippy top of the growing season. So they're gonna get the full amount of time to, you know, root and establish and hopefully start growing for us. Yeah, I usually make a list or at least have a mental list of all the plants that I'm wanting to chop, either to make more full or to start a new plant or something like that. And I like to do it right at the end of winter. Last year, I posted this video in January and people were very upset because it's not spring yet in January and it's not spring yet either in February but I've at least waited a little bit longer this year okay so nobody can get mad at me and where I am spring usually comes pretty early like things are already trying to sprout here although last spring was very cold so we'll see what this year brings anyways I'm still gonna try to add in the footage of me actually cutting the propagation so you can kind of see that as well so hopefully this video will still be interesting and you will enjoy it but yeah I just cannot let these spring propagations pass by without showing them off to you. I like when we can kind of watch them grow together, you know, because I'll do an update video and then when I repot them, I'll do a video, etc., etc. So yes, that is the plan for today's video. Also, it's a little ironic that I'm filming this like spring vibes video and it's literally so dark and gloomy outside. <laughs> Anyways, I'd first like to thank the sponsor of today's video, which is Native. Now, I have been a dedicated user of Native's deodorants for years now, and I am now a dedicated user of their body washes as well. When I'm looking for a body wash, I want something with clean and simple ingredients, which is why I love Native so much. Their body washes are made with plant-based cleansers, they're phthalate and dye-free, and they are, of course, vegan and cruelty-free. Not only that, but they work beautifully, they lather up super well, and a lot of you guys know that I run, so I'm often very sweaty, but Native's body washes always leave me feeling nice and fresh. They don't leave a residue or anything weird like that. Another thing that I love about Native is that they have such a wide range of scents. There really is something for everyone, and they're always launching new ones, which is very fun. This one has definitely become one of my favorites. It's sea salt and cedar. If you're like me and you like woodsy scents, I can definitely recommend you this one. It's very fresh smelling, but it does have that like woodsy cedar scent in there as well. Another tried and true is my lavender and rose. I usually use this at night because lavender is just so relaxing. I recently got eucalyptus and mint, which is another fresh kind of scent. Um, I love anything, like any body products with mint. I'm just really drawn to that. I, it feels like, I don't know, it just feels so refreshing. They also have their candy shop collection available right now, which features a variety of candy inspired scents, which sounds amazing. They have gummy bear, sweet cinnamon hearts, strawberry and vanilla taffy, and sour berry belts. Like, are you kidding me? It sounds so good. If you've been wanting to swap out your body care products for a cleaner option, I could not recommend Native more. I love them so much. Three body washes are normally $27, but with the link down below in the description and my code WILDFERN9, you can get them for three of them for $17. So that gets you 40% off. Also with my code WILDFERN9, you can also get 20% off of their deodorants and lotions. I'm so grateful to Native for the continuous support on my channel. So a big thank you to them. Okay, friends, I think that we are going to be embracing the casual vibes for this video, so I hope that's okay with you. We're actually supposed to get some sun for the second half of this week, and I'm very excited about that. Um, I plan to do a lot of filming, so yeah, I just feel like the vibes are so much better, and I just have so much energy when it's sunny out and I've actually had some of you comment that um I can't remember which one of my like last videos that I posted um someone left a comment along those lines about how my energy just like changes so much when it's sunny and I'm like literally yes like I am solar powered <laughs> and I live in the freaking dark north up here I feel like I make it sound so bad it is like freaking beautiful and amazing here and I'm like so lucky 
to live here, but yeah, I could use a little bit more sun for sure. Okay, we're just gonna start with the one that is closest to me. So this is my Hoya Bella variegated. Took my brain a moment to process what plant I was holding. Um, so I have both the inner variegated and the outer variegated in this pot. It's a mixed pot, but there's much more of the outer variegated than there is of the inner. Um, so I actually took cuttings from the bottom of all of the vines and guess what I found on here? Oh my God, there's literally a mealy on here. You guys, I'm being overtaken by mealy bugs. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see, but there's mealies on there. Where's my crown? Because I am the pest queen. I'm actually kind of wanting to look into, what is it called? Beneficial bugs because I don't know. I just feel like it's kind of at the point where I should explore that route even though I haven't wanted to. So I am gonna do some research on that. But yeah, I'm just finding pests on like so many plants and I can't keep up with it. Anyways, this plant I wanna fill out more because you can see that the top is very sparse and even like the tops of the vines are really sparse because this plant struggled so much for a long time. I highly, highly suspect that this had flat mites. Uh, I couldn't see any with the microscope, but maybe I just wasn't seeing them. Honestly, I don't know. I'm convinced that they're on there because after I did the sulfur treatment, it started growing. So now I'm getting like branching of different vines and things. I mean, the leaves still don't look amazing. Like this plant has never looked amazing for me. And it's quite frustrating because I had such an easy time with the green Hoya Bella, except for it would get spider mites. This is like the one Hoya that I would really struggle with spider mites is like the green version of this. I don't know if I've really had spider mites on this variegated version. But anyways, I just want to fill it out, continue to care for it and try to like crack the code and figure out how it's going to thrive best. Um, so let me grab the propagations. I will show you here. So like I said, I took one from each vine, but one had like multiple, one of the outer variegated ones had multiple mealies on it. So I just tossed that one. So now I just have three propagations, one inner variegated and two outer variegated, which I think is fine because there's way more outer variegated in that pot anyways. So I'm just propagating in water. Um, this water has a tiny bit of super thrive in it and these cuttings all look pretty healthy and they have like new growth coming in on the ends i suspect them to root really easily i actually don't think i have propagated variegated hoya bella before but i have propagated just the green one and it's rooted up really easily so i don't think there's going to be any problems with this i did remove the lower leaves so there's just like room for just stem to like root and be potted up so I think maybe three or four weeks for these, probably gonna be a similar traje trajectory, that's a word, trajectory to my Hoya Linearis, which I am going to show in this video because it did indeed get a haircut, which I'm very excited about. You all know how I feel about my Hoya Linearis. But yeah, we'll see how these do. Once they root, I am going to be repotting this plant into a different pot. I think I'm gonna go with just like a four inch terracotta. So it will be like a small size upgrade, but mostly it will just like look, a or maybe I shouldn't go with terracotta since this is a thirstier Hoya. I think it would look so cute in terracotta though. Dare I do that and try to keep up with it? That's probably a bad idea for me. I'm gonna think about that more. <laughs> maybe I can find it like a cute ceramic plant or something to put it into. Um, well, whatever I decide to do, I am going to be potting the cuttings up. I'll probably unpot this and then take a look at what the root situation is. If it's like really root bound, then I'll probably upsize and pot it all together. If it's not though, I can just stick these cuttings in. So time will tell. Um, but yeah, that is the first one that I took and I did six plants. So we're gonna be going through six plants today. The next one that got the chop was my beautiful philodendron varicosum. So this is what's left. There's two vines going up this moss pole and I just cut one of the vines so there is still like, you know, the other one is still intact but this one, the is missing like the top cut obviously. So I chopped this off. I just chopped like two leaves, the two biggest leaves off which you may have seen by now because I think I showed them in my last video. But I'm gonna show you them again anyways because I am just in love with these leaves 
Like they are so beautiful. So this one is more fresh. This is like the top cut, which is attached to this little catafil here. Um, you can see it's a lighter green. It hasn't completely hardened off yet. I waited until it was completely unfurled to um, do the chop, but yeah, I it's not hardened yet. This one, however, is, and it's just like, oh my goodness, it's so big and dark and beautiful, and oh man, can you see that sheen on it? Oh, it's just so stunning, and I know I've showed the petioles before a bunch, but I just like, yeah, I am enamored with them. Um, so these guys I have, actually, I cut three leaves off. Where did I put the other one? Okay, so this is the third leaf that I cut off. So, yeah, I guess that these three were all on a vine like this. Um, and this one actually was the one that I air layered. And so it had quite a bit of roots. Sorry, I'm just, I don't want this to fall down. Maybe I'll just put it here. Um, so this one had quite a bit of roots in the moss, like in the air layering that I did. Oh, this is pretty dry already. <laughs> Good thing I grabbed this. I need to water this right now. Um, I honestly could probably pot this up. I don't really know why I'm doing it in moss even longer. I think because I'm just undecided of like how I'm going to pot these. I think I might pot the three of these up. So maybe I'll just continue to grow this in moss until these ones are ready. But anyways... This had a pretty substantial root system from the air layering. It took to the air layering with sphagnum moss very well. And now it's just gonna hang out in here waiting for the others. So yeah, we have three leaves that I am working with. And obviously no roots or anything in here yet, but it's the same thing, just water with Super Thrive. And I do suspect that these will root up pretty easily because I've propagated Philodendron Viricosum numerous times now, and I've always had success. So, yeah, I'm really excited to just like get these established and growing up a pole again. It's just like so annoying that I was getting such long internodes. Like what is up with that? Does it just need more light? I felt like it was getting enough light, but maybe it wasn't. If anyone else has philodendron varicosum, let me know. Like do you have small tiny internodes or are you getting long ones like this? And like what's your lighting situation like? I would love to hear about it. So yeah, leave me a comment if you have any any tips for the varicosum my plant shelves are getting absolutely ridiculous i really need to take everything off clean and rearrange soon i know i've made videos like that before but if you are interested in seeing that leave me a comment down below also and let me know i don't know if people are tired of seeing that or if you enjoy like clean and rearrange videos anyways let me grab the next plant okay so the next one that i chopped is my lovely monstera adinsonii it is dripping something on me. This guy has had a bit of a rough winter um, being near the heat vent on my Mills Bow Wide. Those plants kind of get scorched up there. So he does have some crispy tips and things like that. But other than that, he's doing very well because he's a Monstera adinsonii and they are quite hardy. So what I wanna do with this plant is fill out the pot because right now I've basically got these two vines in here. This one was a lot longer, it was really trailing down, and this is the one that I ended up cutting up. So I've made it so it's pretty much even with the other one. Um, and then I chopped everything into single node cuttings because like I said, I just want to pot them back in here and get a more lush plant. The thing about Monstera adinsonii is that I love it climbing, but I also love it trailing, and it's so hard for me to decide. So I was considering potting up a couple of the cuttings um, onto a moss pole and having it grow up so I could get like large Monstera adinsonii leaves, and then potting like the other ones just back into the pot and have like a lush trailing one. Normally I only like to have one of each plant, but sometimes I do make exceptions, and that's probably one that I would make an exception for. But I'm debating whether I should do that or not because a plant that I have really been wanting lately, which I would probably get if the opportunity <laughs> arose, is Monstera Escaletto. They look similar, but they're massive. Um, so I don't think I need an Adinsonii and an Escaletto on a pole. So I don't know, maybe I should just wait and get an Escaletto rather than starting the Adinsonii on a moss pole. So I'm really undecided about that because I would be happy to just have a trailing Adinsonii and then a climbing Escaletto. I'd probably just buy an Escaletto cutting, like I've seen mid cuts and stuff going up for 
pretty cheap actually um, at some of the shops so I'm keeping my eyes peeled for that but yeah in the meantime we have our lovely monster at Insoni eye that we are working with um, so I'll show you the cuttings that I took I honestly think the Adansoni eyes are so underrated. I mean, obviously the variegated ones are hyped, but I feel like the green ones are so, so beautiful. And when the sun hits the leaves, they have like such a pretty sheen. And yeah, I've just always loved them ever since I was first starting to get into houseplants and I still love them today. And I'm so happy that I kept a cutting from my original Monstera Adansoni eye, the first one I ever got. Um, because I sold the big plant when I moved, but I just knew that I had some sort of emotional attachment to that plant, so I took a small cutting, I think just a wet stick actually, and I grew it back once I moved here. And I'm so thankful for that because there's other plants that held emotional value for me that I just got rid of the whole plant, and I miss those plants, like for example my Raftophora tetrasperma, I don't know why I didn't just like keep a small cutting of that. And I recommend doing that if you don't have the room for a plant or you have to get rid of it for some reason but it has sentimental value, just take a small cutting um, so you can still have a piece of that plant you can grow it out again someday. Anyways, here's the cuttings. How many do I have? I think four or five? Okay, I actually have five cuttings in here. Um, so yeah, that is what they all look like. This one, actually these two look pretty cool. They have like really big fenestrations there, that one and that one yeah they're really nice so once again they are just rooting in water water is honestly like just my go-to propagation method now because it's just so simple I usually have success with it and if I don't then that's when I throw things in the propagation bin but I don't have a ton of room in my propagation bin and yeah this is just I don't know it's fun too you get to watch the roots come in it's just we don't have to complicate things sometimes. We can just, you know, basics work. And this is something that works for me. I enjoy it. Uh, so yeah, that's why I'm brooding pretty much all of these, all of these actually, yeah, in just water. So really looking for those to root up so that I can fill out this plant again. Okay, the next one that we're gonna talk about is one of my newest philodendron in my collection. Actually, it might be the last philodendron that I got. Um, and that is my philodendron Charonier. This is actually the bottom of it. So I have now the bottom of the plant, a mid cut and a top cut. So I have three plants of this currently. I decided to just pot this back into the pot. It doesn't have a moss pole or anything anymore because I'm going to be adding that once I pot these back together. But I really want this to be part of the plant when I do start growing on a moss pole because I'm just obsessed with these leaves like they're so pretty now I really love obviously I love like the texture or like ripples or you know whatever this is that it has going on but I also love the sheen and like the color uh, it's almost like sparkly like it's very just like it's not a velvet leaf but it just has a really strong sheen to it it's so pretty so even though I have three pieces of this actually I have four pieces because I cut the top into single nodes. This was the very top cutting um, right here. This is a new leaf that unfurled and hardened off like a week or two ago. It is so pretty. It does have some very minor damage on it, just like little dots, I don't know, from EFN or something maybe, but yeah, so just like shiny and beautiful. And then this was the leaf just below it. I think that this was the first leaf that I got in my care after it kind of acclimated to my home. So it's pretty small, but that's fine. It already has like a little growth point there as well. So I'm sure that these will root up quickly. I just have them in sphagnum moss in my Millsbow wide cabinet. And then this is the mid cut, which has four leaves on it, as you can see. So yeah, I've got a lot of like cuttings and plants of this right now. Maybe I'll use one of them for a trade. I have a few trades planned for this spring, so maybe somebody will want one of these. It is such a cool philodendron, and I really, really want to size it up. Once everything's rooted, I'm probably gonna put three vines into a pot with a moss pole, and I think I'm going to do, I'll probably do a thickly style pole for now, because it's not really big or anything yet, so I can probably get away with that. But yeah, I'm just so excited that this had reached the top of its like temporary moss pole, which is why I went ahead and chopped it. I've just been waiting for that to happen. So now I had just have to wait until these root up, which I assume will be pretty quick because it's going to be living in the cabinet, like I said. So humidity is higher in there. It should be very happy. And also the root system looked really good on this. I actually did a whole video just dedicated to repotting my philodendron Charonier after I got it. And I was a little, not concerned about the roots, but it was just like a really 
thin root system and I hate like thin oh my phone's ringing I hate thin philodendron roots it just like kind of stresses me out hello huh yeah yeah they definitely have a little bit more of a delicate root system as far as philodendron go but it looked really healthy so I was really thankful for that so now it's just a waiting game waiting for I guess just these ones really to root up because the mid cut actually had roots that went down into the main pot and it had like a full root system already which is why it's in potting mix okay so lastly I do have two Hoya to talk about and the first one is obviously my Hoya Linearis I am such a big fan of this Hoya it's definitely in like my top three Hoya of all time and I've been working the past like year and a half to really make a more full pot so every spring I am just going to continue to do my chop and prop and it honestly when once spring is approaching this is long enough that it needs a chop because it starts getting too close to my floor so yeah this was quite long before I chopped it and I ended up just taking cuttings from uh, these main vines I think and then those ones still have fresh little growth at the end but I chopped the plant so it's all like approximately the same length so I think that it looks really nice um, yeah I'm always showing you guys all the vines that are growing on this because there's quite a few now and yeah I'm just so happy with this plant it's so soft and fuzzy if you have never had a linearis like yeah let me tell you they're just like the softest nicest plants. Also I was posting a video of this plant on my Instagram story the other day and I've shown my linearis so many times right like I've had this plant for years so maybe it's just now that it's getting like more dense but I had three separate people respond to the story and say that it looked like rosemary and I thought that that was hilarious because I've never thought of that before and I've never had anybody say that before and then just randomly on that specific story like three people said that so yeah I guess it kind of does look like rosemary. Honestly I love rosemary so I'm down. So these are the cuttings that I took. There's quite a few in here actually um, because there was you know several vines and then some of them were branching off so I cut the branching part off to root as a separate vine as well so yeah this is going to fill out the pot quite a bit once I can you know pot these back in and I think that my plan is going to be to upsize this pot. I would actually like to shop around and find like a cuter hanging planter for this plant because yeah, I just love it so much. It deserves something cuter um, than this. This is like a mismatched nursery pot hanger situation that I just like jimmied together. But um, yeah, I have several cuttings in here that are rooting in water. These typically root really quickly for me. Um, I've obviously cut this up a lot in the past. You actually don't even need to really water propagate these. Like you can just pop them right back into the pot, which is probably what I would have done if this pot wasn't so full already but it is, so I'm probably gonna have to increase the pot size when these are ready to go. But yeah, I'm just gonna keep my eye out for any roots. I actually have this rooting on my windowsill, so it's getting a lot of light and everything. I love just seeing like the baby leaves on the ends. But yeah, this is probably the one that I'm most excited about just because I'm always so excited to chop and prop my Hoya Linearis. All right, the next plant is another Hoya. It is my Hoya Matilde. And I've really been wanting to propagate this one um, for the reason that it's just like, this used to be on a trellis. So it kind of was in a really wonky shape to become a trailing plant. Um, but I like the way that it looks trailing. So I'm trying to chop and prop so that I can fill this out. You can see it's pretty sparse at the top and then it gets like really dense down here. There's a lot of vines and everything, I guess just because it branched out so much and the way it was like wrapped around the trellis. Um, so I tried to do a similar thing to the linearis. I tried to just like cut so that they're all a similar length except for this one because it was just like a long vine with a peduncle so I left that one on but yeah so I'm going to let all the cuttings root. Let me show you them. I have this little jar full of Hoya Matilde cuttings. There is actually quite a few in here and then once they're rooted I'm just going to pop them back into the top of this um, planter. And there's tons of room in there as you can see like it's really only the plants really only coming out of that one little spot so this is just going to help so much to fill it out and then these vines will grow out and become longer and eventually the plant will just kind of balance out at least that's what i'm hoping um there was like a couple of vines in particular that were just putting out the most beautiful leaves too like i was so impressed with some of the leaves on this hoya linearis let me see if i can find a couple 
or Liniers, Hoya Mathilde. Yeah, I'm just gonna take this one out so I can show you, but look at how big and like dark and glossy the leaves are. Like, oh my goodness. They're just so gorgeous down this whole vine. Like, yeah, I love that vine so much. And there's a couple vines in here that are like that with just like really, really dark and large leaves. I'm gonna pop that guy back in and I did the same thing as the linearis where I just removed the lower leaves so that there's some just like bare stem to root otherwise the leaves can just rot so it's just kind of easier to take the lower leaves off this plant has so many peduncles like it's actually ridiculous I cannot believe it hasn't bloomed for me yet like there's honestly I have no idea tons tons of peduncles on here I am getting a lot of new growth from the top of this right now as well which is exciting I have this whole vine Coming in, do you see those little baby leaves? Like how cute, oh my goodness. So these are fresh and shiny and then we have little baby leaves coming in everywhere. And we also have a peduncle coming in, which is not surprising because this plant has the most peduncles out of any of my Hoya. But yeah, we have baby leaves coming all the way up here. So it seems to be doing really well. And I think it's starting to give me larger and darker foliage because I've moved it away from the grow light. It used to get blasted by the grow light. Um, so the leaves kind of would get like, I don't know, just bleached a little bit lighter. But I really like the look of the dark foliage on this plant. So that's why I moved it to a less bright location. Anyways, really excited to start filling this out a little bit more. It just looks kind of crazy right now, but I can see the potential of what this is going to look like once it's like a nice, full, beautiful trailing plant. So yeah, I'm really excited for that potential. Oh my goodness, look at these, these leaves too. Like, they are huge. They're not as round. Hoya Matilde can really vary in the shape of its leaves. Like, some come out more elongated like this and like huge, and then some are just like smaller and more round. This is a cross of Hoya Serpens and Hoya Carnosa, so yeah, you can really see the traits of both plants. It's just so pretty. Anyways, that is all of the spring propagations that I have taken within the past few days and that I currently have rooting. Don't forget if you're interested in checking out Natives products to click the link down below in the description and use code, I almost forgot my code, WILDFERN9 to get three body washes for $17, which is 40% off, or you can get their deodorants, lotions for 20% off with that code. Thank you so much for watching. Leave me a comment down below in the description. I would love to know your spring propagation plans. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to leave me a comment down below. I would love to chat with you. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.